It, it's really cool having you here tonight Thanks. because because we have I've had more fun talking with you over the years about being a director and and I remember as Desperate Housewives was first starting up, uh, it was huge. It was huge. It took the country by storm. ABC was in Nirvana because of these these gals, and you were on that uh, on that first expedition when it first started uh, I, I was indeed and uh it, you know it was very interesting too because uh you know i, I heard about the project and and looked at the pilot and thought it was just really neat but i said oh they're gonna have to change the title no one will ever go with that really well yeah i, I you know it shows you what i know <laughs> <laughs> you're just a director you're not the writer that's, that's right and you know and, and six months later it sounds like we've been uh, saying it all our lives yeah yeah but um you know we sat up on the street it's a street up at universal it's called uh colonial street mm -hmm. and uh we made about six of them and no one came up, and we had a hard time getting... Um, what do you mean no one came up? Oh, the executives didn't come. The, the showrunner didn't show up a lot. The, we were pretty much up there just making ourselves laugh. Really? Uh, uh, now, is that, a, is that... Pardon me, but... Uh, is that a good sign or a bad sign if people, if the execs and the showrunners aren't coming up? It, it was just a sign that we were a big, absolute unknown... And everybody had, was busy doing things. <laughs> like staying uh, away just in case it wasn't very good. We had a hard time getting guest stars. We had a hard time getting people to come on the show. Now, this is before it's aired. This is before so you're, it's you're aired. in production, you're making these things, and no one knows about it. So we made, oh, I don't know, six or seven of them. And then we aired. And uh, after the first night we aired, we were really, really big. Really? Really. It happened that fast. Which, really which, big. Which episode was the car wash? Oh, that was, that, that was about the third or fourth episode, I think. Um, when we aired the second week, we were national big. Uh -huh. We were we were uh, uh, nationally a big gorilla. Yeah. And when we aired the third time, we were planetary. Wow. That's how fast it was. Wow, wow, wow. And after the third time, you would not believe what it was like. <laughs> Did some of the executives come up and hang around? <laughs> we, was the showrunner there? We had... Three and four different, you know, uh, EPK units a day coming and doing up there doing pieces on us. And, and and an EPK unit, Andy, is a electronic press kit hired by the production company or the studio to promote, do the interviews behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it could be for the network or it could be for just in general independent guys or whatever. It, it was for almost everything. Yeah. yeah, I like to tell this story that in the in the middle of the first year, all the girls went to see Oprah because we were that big. By the end of the first year, Oprah came to see us. <laughs> wow, the Oprah factor. We, here's, here's, we, we, it's so big, o Oprah o came to Oprah us. Oprah came to us and did a little piece on the street. What I remember was I was at CBS at the time, and they had hired the three girls to host or to make the announcement of the People's Choice Awards, something like that. And there was a press conference in the Highland and um, the the complex there where the Academy Theater Oh, yeah, yeah, was. yeah. Right, right. And it was the Hollywood morning. Hi Hollywood it was Highland. Hollywood Highland. Yeah. It was the morning after the episode in which Nicolette Sheridan did this car wash. Yeah, right. Which was probably at that time in her shorts. One of the sexiest things ever in prime time. Yeah. And after that, and then they had this press conference in the morning, and the press conference just was waylaid because of that moment. I mean, you're right. It was like meteoric. Did you do was that? It? Did you do the car wash? I did not. Why, why didn't you do that one? Uh, I was asked. I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how you say that. Uh, do they do they change the name of that street now to? Uh, no, it's still oh, called, still, it's still called Colonial Street. It's a big part of the tour, but, but they run the tour through. Yeah. So, but but yeah. when when it was when it was happening at that level, then what sort of pressures as the director did you notice from uh, that were different from the first six episodes? You know, the the only real difference was the amount of. Uh, deep interest from, uh, you know, the producing team and the writing team. Uh, suddenly we realized we were a something. So, and did that mean that they were making changes while you were shooting more often, or were there changes in the scripting, or were certain characters beginning to uh, excel over others, get more attention? What, what was going on? What were the dynamics? Well, the you know, it was it was pitched uh, it was pitched as an ensemble for the girls. Uh, and, and it was written with uh, a couple of the girls being a little more forward to the others. And so very quickly everybody realized everybody wanted an equal footing. Uh -huh. And as the year went on when we did any of the uh, promotional stuff, it was we had to be very careful to be very even in how the girls were placed each time. Absolutely. So, so that if somebody was a little more forward in 
at, at one time. The next time somebody else had to be. And because there was, I remember there was a the Vanity Fair cover uh, yes. scandal, and Terry Hatcher didn't show up or something, and it was like, oh my God, they're fighting already. You know, there there were things that went on that were mostly publicity based and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And but that doesn't hurt the show either, by the way. You know, it it never came to the set. The, these gals were always fabulous on the set. Terry and everybody were just amazing on the set. See, I didn't believe that. And I, I remember I asked you one time, I said, Larry, I, 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 how are you dealing with all these divas up there? I said, what, what do you do? And you said to me, uh, here's how I direct them. Uh, you stand here. You stand here. You stand here. Okay, ready? Action. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't try to mess with them. You just kind of kept the, the momentum going. Well, they, they all wanted to be directed in various ways. And so, it, you know, it was obviously a little bit more than that. Um, but, uh, oh, you're being, just being humble. I am not. <laughs> but, uh, 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 you know, they were, they, it, it was the best job I've had in years and years and years that yeah. first season. That first season was the best job directing I think I've ever had. Oh, my gosh. And, and it was the funnest. And, and even as the show wore on, every day we did something that really made it worth coming to work. I love it. Uh, you know, let's take a little break. And when we come back, I want to ask you a little bit about what it, what, what's the process of being a TV director, and you know when is it fun like Desperate Housewives, and when is it not maybe so much fun? That sounds great. Yeah, I love it. We're talking to Larry Shaw. This is the Hollywood Headliners. I'm Rob Weller along with Big Andy E. We'll be right back. And thank you, everyone. Thank you very, very much. Whoops, Larry. I caught Larry with his phones down. Ho, ho! Larry Shaw is our guest tonight. He is uh, a, uh, a very successful director. We've been talking about uh, one of the projects he did, which was Desperate Housewives. He was also an executive producer on that. And and it's been great fun just hearing some of those stories. You just got done doing a castle. I did. And, I did. and uh, so when was that? Two weeks ago, right? Uh, I finished shooting on Monday of this week. Yeah, because say Rose got to go over and visit you on the set yeah both Lindsay's came down to visit she had a great time Lindsay and her roommate Lindsay Shaw who Lindsay Shaw what's your last name my name is Shaw oh we each have a Lindsay ah I love that That's right. uh and so they got to come down and see the set which was a big thrill for them and and see the stuff that you were shooting let's talk a little bit about you know what a, what does a tv director do when you uh who calls you and and you get a your agent call you does a network call you how does it all sort of begin in the first place in general well I'll, how it begins is a different story but how how it happens is generally you're you're called by your agent with an offer sometimes you're you go to meetings to you know lay the groundwork for an offer coming later in the year or another uh -huh. time or you know there's kind of a background you know, a bunch of things you're doing to keep yourself out there. But generally, it just comes as an offer. Mm -hmm. uh, and you either have time or want it or don't want it or things like that. Um, but I think the question you're asking is, uh, where does a director come from? Yeah. Uh, and Well, that was the next question I was going to ask. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because, Quick study. And, by the way, I love guests that tell me what I should ask next. It makes me look so smart. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, directors come from everywhere, and I got to tell you, there's, it's done a million different ways. One of the weird things about being a director is you don't spend a whole lot of time with other directors. Uh, there's a thing why they don't like each other. Uh, no, it's just not. You're busy doing your own thing, and directors are hired one director per project. Uh, you rarely even see the other directors as they pass by, preparing for whatever they're doing, hmm. uh, and how they work unless you really seek it out, is a mystery. Oh, so so you don't want to tell us how you, what the secrets to the Larry Shaw success really are? Do I don't even know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> but, but being an executive producer on a show and hiring some directors has shown me a few things in watching other directors work in a certain way. But in general, uh, there's a thing now called shadowing. Um, there are all sorts of programs and systems to put director wannabes or, or more junior directors on the set with directors who are working mm -hmm. uh, to literally just follow them all over through the entire process. So they can learn. So they can learn. <laughs> so they can learn. And that did exist when I started. Uh, you just... How, how old were you when you got your first gig? I was 26. And, and what was your first gig? I did Stingray for Stephen Cannell. How'd you get that gig? Well, I was. Uh, I, did you shadow Stephen Cannell? I did not. Well, you know what? I did. St I did to some degree shadow Stephen Cannell. I'll tell you the story. Uh, I have a very good friend, a very very successful director named Rob Bowman, who I met in college. We were interested in filmmaking, and uh, I'd made a little film in college, and he had made a little, a little something, and we came down here, and he knew, or was almost kind of a family member in a way of Steve Cannell's extended group, and he went to Steve Cannell's company as an office PA. 
Uh, and I went to USC as a graduate film student, the best film school in the country. Name dropper. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I've never heard of it. And we got on the ah. phone every night and told each other what we had learned. Yeah. Oh. And uh, after about three months, he had the chance to hire another office PA. And I, after you know, fretting about this for a day or two and talking to a number of people, took a leave of absence from USC and went to Steve Cannell's company as an office PA. Oh, my gosh. And I did things like drive scripts and clean toilets. Yeah. I honestly did. And you, and you were thrilled to be able to do any of it. I, 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 I took the gamble that being around it was going to be quicker than... Uh, I wasn't very sophisticated. And all the kids at USC were so sharp and so... They were all Hollywood killers. Yeah. Uh, and it, you know, and I, you're just a nice kid from Utah. I just came out of nowhere. I have no. I, just, I tell that the fact that I'm in the business just proves it's too easy to get in it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so we, we did that, and there was a thing called inserts, little thing, business card, you the business card. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, he, there was a guy who did them, and then eventually we were the guys who did them, and we started making them bigger and bigger. Everything we were asked to do, we shot bigger, hmm. and we sh- eventually were shooting small narrative sequences. So I'm mostly without dialogue for him. And through the process, we would sit in the editing room with Steven and the other executive producers as they cut the film, talked about how to put it together. And, and Steven would go, you know what we need here? We need a, a, a sequence that does this. And we would go out and make that piece of storytelling. And after about a year of doing this, and we, we became absolutely gigantic from shooting cards to having an entire department with transportation and, and, and managers and the whole bit. And you were just little... We were 25 years old. You were old. just little dweeby PAs. We were these little guys. You were what's known as a hey you. And you know he had seven shows on there, so he worked six, seven days a week. Yeah. Uh, anyway, after about a year of doing this, he brought uh, me and Rob and eventually two other very su- successful guys now and, and a whole batch of other people who have done things uh, into his office, and he said, I'm going to make you guys the, the directors. <laughs> And wow. you know, wow, literally, wow. It, was, it was like it was like going before the king and having the sword on it, your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, you're knighted. It's none of my business, but uh, you know, you probably weren't making a lot as a PA. Who knows? Yeah, you're just make, probably making a few bucks a week. We right? we knew we were in the middle of the biggest film school there was. Yeah, yeah. we knew we had something great going on. So did, I'm not going to ask you how much specifically you make because it's none of my business. But I'd love to know. But as a PA, actually, no, no, no. As a director, well, all of a sudden when he made you director, did he make you a low paying director or a high paying director or what happened? The, the pay for a director is set by the Directors Guild. So you were in, babe. Uh, and whatever the rate it's was, it's like winning the voice. It's like being yeah. Nicholas David. But he uh, went from USC to USC, the University of Steve Cannell. I, <laughs> That's wow. right. Wow, I like ah, that. Andy, you should be I've a writer, never, I have Andy. never heard that before. I haven't either. Whatever the DGA minimum rate or DJ base rate for a network episodic television show was in 1985 and 6 yeah. is what I made wow. for, for doing that job. Now, that rate now is about $40,000. Per, per show? Per show. Yeah. Uh, it was probably... You know, and then plus plus residuals... If it's rerun. If it's rerun. In various forms yeah. and... Uh, it, it is still kind of the gold standard of the episodic director job. By the way, I got a residual check today myself in the mail. How big was it? Who wants to guess? Three cents. Three cents? No, you're way was off. It, was it three figures? W- with including the comma, no. including the not decimal the point? point? No, no, no. It wasn't not three figures. Two. It was two. Oh Lord. Twenty six dollars. Twenty six dollars and forty seven cents. I don't even know what it was for. Oh, I've got them for three cents. Have you got them for three cents? I've seen your check at residuals bar. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's a bar yeah. that has guys really bad residual yep. checks. Yep. So, so back to the question of yeah. how, how, how does a person become a director? Yeah. Well, hang out with Stephen Cannell. That's how I became a director. And, yeah. and, and that is a unique, one of a kind story. Okay. I, I want to talk a little bit about the castle you just shot. Sure. Uh, when did you know you were going to get that castle? Um, oh, a couple, three months ago. About three months ago. So, in, in, from the time you got the call to the time you got on the set, what did you do during that period? Uh,. I, did you work on the castle at all? Did you think about it? Did you have to show up? Did you no, no uh, go on vacation in Tahiti? I mean, what did you do? A, a, a director job is general. Uh, an episodic director job on network television is, in theory, seven days of prep, eight or nine days of shooting, mm-hmm. depending on the show, mm-hmm. uh, a small half a week break, and then four days of editing. That's the job. Wow. That's that, all you have to do? That's all you have wait, to do. Wait, wait, wait. 15, <laughs> 16, 17, 18, so, 9, 9, I'm counting 19 days. So in theory... It's a month. It's a month. Well, it, it's almost a month, isn't it? Yeah, 22 yeah. working days in yeah. a month. In theory, 
on your first day of prep, they're supposed to have uh, a script for you. Yeah. <laughs> did you have one? Uh, they're very good on Castle. I did have a yeah, script. Yeah, well, that's, that show's been around for a while. Uh, I've been on shows where there are just pieces of a script the whole time, and the idea of having a script is really kind of a joke. Uh, but they're, they're actually very solid there, and they got their routine really down. So, yeah, so yeah. you have the script. You spend seven days uh, being involved in casting it. Mm-hmm. You go out and find the locations for it. You work with the... Wait a minute. You go out and find the locations yes. for it? Well, well there, you know, there's all sorts of departments that support this. But yes, I'm taking two locations, and I choose them. Uh, and then so, so there's been a, a location guy that's gone out and done yes. the advance work, and then they say, now we, we've narrowed it down, Larry, would you come out and pick the yes. one you want, right? exactly. Uh, any chance you could ever use Andy's or mine house on that? Because I know those pay pretty well. Uh, I've used many houses in your neighborhood. Yeah, well, but not specifically ours. Uh, that's my point. Uh-huh. Well, could you, could, <laughs> could you? Yours is too luxurious. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Andy. You know, I don't know if we write that rich. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, you got out of that one. All right, so then you got to go out and scout the locations. Scout the locations. You uh, advise and see some casting and uh, choose some people. Um, you work with the writing team to try to bring it into some sort of shape that will you know, fit the board and do the stuff, blah, 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 blah. Wait, wait, wait. Do you get to actually add lines and say, no, no, I think we should, rather than have him walk upstairs, you should go down an elevator, that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, not heavy dialogue writing, but l- let's say we found a location that, uh, on this show, we have a, had a fabulous location. It was a construction site, and it offered certain opportunities if, if we did certain things in it. Mm-hmm. So I went and then I pitched those things to the writers and said, hey, if we do this, 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 and this, it'll go like this. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, this is what the location it, will it, do. And are the writers receptive to directors? I, I always thought that director sort of rules. Uh, he's sort of the king on the set. Are, are writers receptive to directors? It, it, well, first of all, in television, no writers. Uh, writers are the king. Okay, the showrunner is the king. Yeah, like the guys we've had, like Glenn Mazzara and, and Jeff yeah. Melvoin have it's been in, here. It's yeah. in features where directors. Yeah, in upper levels of yeah. features, the directors yeah. are are, are yeah. the superstars of it. But in television, the superstar is the showrunner. Yeah. Okay, so you're above the guy, as Tom Kenny would say. You're you're uh, right above the guy that loads the tilt a whirl. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, are they receptive? Sure. Yeah. If, if you're talking in support of the story yeah. and yeah. it makes sense, and yeah. you're not, uh, and, and if you have a relationship, I'm sure with a guy sure, and he, sure. he he likes what you do you, uh, and you've directed a couple of castles before this yeah this is my third one okay I'll, so they know you and they know how you work yeah yeah i mean th- we've had a chance to talk and see how we think and uh what kind of filmmakers he all, all the people involved are and and uh, in any situation there's certain levels of trust and personality and yeah. ego and all the things and each each situation is completely different but in general uh as long as you know how to speak with other humans uh you know, you can collaborate quite well. I like that. It, 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 you know, maybe you could teach some of that to Andy. Hey, I'm going to take a little break. When we come back, uh, Larry directed a current superstar in the music business, uh, and he's got a little story about her. Um, I wonder who we're talking about. I wonder who we're talking about. I wonder who we're talking about. This is Rob Weller. It's Hollywood Headliners. We'll be right back. Hey, Larry, we keep catching you with your cans down, as we say in the business. Hey, uh, uh, I by the you, way. I thought you sold for more commercials. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's all I have for tonight. Check out our podcast, <laughs> by the way, here at Hollywood Headliners uh, with Rob Weller uh, on UBNradio.com. Just go to our archives. we got a lot of great shows there, game shows with Dave Williger, uh, sitcoms. Bob Heath talked to us about that. Two and a Half Men's John Cryer uh, gave us really some great inside stuff. Walking Den with Glenn Mazar, a terrific showrunner. And our guest this evening is Larry Shaw, who is uh, a very successful television. And you've done some films. In fact, you did a, a little film once. Was it in some jungle or something with yeah, some young I, actresses? I've done a lot of television films, uh-huh. uh huh, m- miniseries, movies of the week, blah blah blah. Back when, back in the day when those they were still doing, still those. being made. Yeah, right. and I did a little movie called Nurses on the Line. It was about wait, uh, wait, nurses what? Nurses on the line. Nurses on nurses on the line in a world. <laughs> Uh, we uh, we called it nurses on the vine. Uh, it was about uh, you know a doctors without border situation. And, yeah, and uh, yeah. four young, very pretty nurses and a couple of grizzly doctors uh-huh. plane crashes in the jungle of Mexico. Oh yeah, Andy, you wrote that storyline, didn't you? Cannibalism. Um, I don't know any cannibalism. No, nope, but stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, and we shot it in Mexico around a little town called Catamaco, uh-huh. uh, and it was deep, deep. Deep in the jungle. Deep in the jungle. Really in the jungle. It was a really neat set of locations. And there were these four uh, young ash- actresses, uh, one of which 
it was Jennifer Lopez. No way. It, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, yeah. you directed J-Lo. You gave her your star, her start. No, I wouldn't quite say that. I, I think J-Lo was obviously somebody who was, who, who was being put in things and being moved forward. Yeah. It was before Selena. Uh-huh. Um, and she was not the J-Lo you know now. She was... Uh, young. Young, shy, quiet. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 a, a touch more roly-poly than she is now. Yeah. And if you had said to me, out of these four gals... Pick the one who's going to be the big, big, big. Would it have been J Lo? Uh, my, my question is, would it have been J Lo? Is that the person you would have picked out of the four young actresses in this new movie? I knew it was her. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, you know, it, it, it would not have been the first pick. But uh, who uh, else was in the movie? Do you remember? Oh, Did, I can't. Anybody I can't. we know? Uh, you would if I could remember their names. Yeah, gotcha. None of them were J Lo. Yeah. See, this is how it goes. Yeah, I know. Hey, uh, just a couple of minutes left. Uh, one of the things we talk about sometimes, uh, this is a tough business. This is a tough business environment, Hollywood. Um, you know, when things are not, when the phone's not ringing for you all the time, how do you get through it? How do you keep yourself buoyed and, and make yourself uh, still believe in Larry Shaw? Ready? This is the motivation <laughs> thing, and drinking and drugs do not count. Damn. Oh, Rob, you promised you weren't going to do anything like this yes. to me. Come on. It's very, very hard. And when you're really big and on top, I swear when I was on Desperate and things were really, really this last kind of big round, I remember saying to myself, you know this is going to go away and you're going to feel that thing again. Mm -hmm. You just need to practice. And you know what? After a few months, it goes away. Yeah. And you go, oh, nobody wants me. Right, right, yeah. And then things happen that you don't see coming, and then, then suddenly you're doing other stuff. Yeah. But how do you do it? It's everybody in town suffers the same set of That's roles. a really important point. There is no one that works in this business that doesn't go through what we all feel in some way, shape, or form. I'll give you a piece of advice to anybody who's young. Get some hobbies. I used to think directing was my hobby because that's all I did, and it was what I wanted to do. Yeah. I wish I had learned golf. <laughs> I, 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 I wish I had a set of things yeah. that I really wanted to do as much as directing. Yeah. Because there are times when you can't do what you want to do, and, and it would be really nice to have something you want as bad. Yeah, you know what? That is uh, absolutely great advice. Really though, good. Because uh, we forget about that. We, we worry so much about our business and how we are in our business and being perceived. Um, Larry, this was this was great. Well, thank you. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Really great fun having you down. Thank you for helping Big Andy E with his uh, headliner news tonight. You're welcome. Man. Uh, Could not have done it without you. No, you really couldn't, uh, Andy. In fact, I was going to point that out. <laughs> uh, and and what's coming up next for you? What are you working on next? I'm going to go do a couple hours of Defiance for the Sci-Fi Channel. Cool. Uh, in Toronto. Wow. Hey, you hoser. Go up there to Canada and drink some of that Canadian beer. Yep. Larry Shaw, thank you very much. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about uh, summer movies. Which movies have performed, right, Andy? And which ones have been the losers? Right. And we're also going to look forward to uh, Oscar. Yeah. All the Oscar buzz movies. Yeah. It's going to be a good show. Yeah, good panel. Really good, good panel next week. Yep. So join us for Hollywood Headlines. I'm Rob Waller. We thank you, as always. Remember, you're as entitled to Hollywood as anybody. But if you come out here, be prepared. Good night, everyone.